about 3.30 in the morning. Got my bags packed, my training shoes. Uh, ready to go to Aiken, South Carolina. I'm tired. Breakfast. Just a little bit. All right. On my way out the door. It's about a two and a half hour drive, maybe a little more. Aiming to get there maybe an hour before race time. So I can check in, get a nice little shakeout run. Take a gel or something. Uh, here we go. Two and a half hours later, here for packet pickup at the race site. It's like a nice, cool morning. Nice and chilly. Kiki! 449, prime number, so that's good luck. Nice, clear day. It's about low 40s right now. Kind of talking through a shiver, which is a good thing. Uh, about a half hour before race time. Doing a warm up run here. Just a little bit cold, thinking I should have brought arm sleeves. And uh, hoping I warm up enough for him without having to need him. In the uh, Nimbus 25 right now. Gonna change into the vapor flies in a few minutes. Oh, beautiful morning. Let's see how we warm up. So, I think it's gonna warm up nicely. I should be pretty chilly in just a singlet and gloves and ear warmers at the start, but that hopefully won't last long. Nice sun rise behind me. It is kind of warm up. I think going with the compression tights, probably a good choice today, just to keep the legs warm. We'll see what happens. All right, it's about 10 minutes to show time. Got my vapor flies on, ready to roll. I think I was right about not needing arm sleeves. Um, it'll be warm enough. So, I'm gonna have my second breakfast here and uh, get ready to roll. Ah, see you on the other side. Well, I ended up fifth overall. I was in the top three until about the last mile and they were just stronger than I was. I just died. Uh, the fourth mile and the seventh mile were on a soft surface that was kind of a dirt road, but almost sandy dirt and it just kind of zapped me. Hard to get it back after that, but 61.55, unofficial. Um, I guess I can't be upset with it. It's a decent run. Um, yeah, that's it. Just did a little cool down with Rob B, who took third place. He was going for the Grandmaster 10 mile record, so I don't feel bad finishing behind him. <clears throat> it's just a beautiful day to run here, but I'm ready to be done running so I'm gonna wait around for awards like I said pretty sure I got age group unless the guy who got fourth is a really 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 good looking 40 year old um, but yeah ready to call it a day all right so I'm back home I've had a nice long drive to think about the race uh, what went well what didn't what go well and um, you know what I'll do next time this is the third of like six 10 mile races I'm doing this spring so hopefully I'll get a uh, I'll be able to lower my time a little bit uh, although this was supposed to be the fastest course um, more on that in a minute so I'm looking at my Strava here that's why I'm looking off to the side and it looks like my first three miles were right on pace you know whenever I race a 10 miler on a, on a good road course one hour is kind of always the goal. And I've only run a sub one hour, 10 miler once, and that was a virtual race. So I can't even really count that. I wouldn't feel right counting that. But I was right on through the first three miles, feeling good, you know, kind of in about third place, pretty much from the start. Uh, first place took off and it was clear he was gonna be out of reach. Second place was kind of in reach for the first few miles, more on him later. Um, 
mile four is when things started to slow down and uh, there were no hills in this race. I mean, other than, you know, the little undulations that, that roads normally do, the, this was totally flat. But mile four is when the surface changed from paved to kind of like a, uh, a straight dirt road. There were some turns, but it was a dirt road, but it wasn't like um, hard packed, you know, gravel that you'd find in some of the Charlotte area greenways. Um, it was more like a sandy dirt. So even though it wasn't that thick, it was enough to really sap the energy out. Um, and it was really shaded. The shade was nice, you know, the temperature was nice and everything, but it being shaded, you never, it never got that, you know, moisture and then baked in with the sunlight that sometimes makes those dirt roads a little bit, you know, harder and gives you more energy return. So I felt like I was, you know, trying to keep my pace and, and fighting against that um, and using a lot more energy early on than I should have. Uh, fifth mile, um, we got back out onto the roads and we kind of turned to this this part near the northern part of the course which looks like the cross on a capital T. Uh, you go out one way then you kind of go around to the other side of the block and go out the other way and go around again back the way you were coming before you turn back on the road you came in on um, and it's a mile long stretch so you went most of a mile turned around did a full mile turned around completed that most of a mile you did and uh, it was straight, it was fast, but I, it feels like there was almost a slight grade in one direction because once I did a 180, it felt easier. All the while, trying to keep eyes on uh, the second place runner and keep him in reach, but I could hear fourth and fifth place gaining on me. Um, not only their footfalls, which if you can hear their footfalls, they're too close. Um, but also one of the guys was just breathing heavily, just heaving. And I was thinking, if he's breathing that hard, he's, uh, he's not going to be able to sustain that the whole time. Uh, spoiler alert, he did. Um, anyway, after I turned off of that capital T, um, the guy who was in second place started opening up. He had a lot in reserve. Eventually, he got out of sight and never saw him again. So then I was trying to preserve the podium, you know, preserve my third place. All the while, I could hear these guys gaining on me. Um, felt all right uh, until at mile seven, I hit a bunch of those, you know, soft dirt roads again, um, which just kind of sapped it out. I was over it at that point, and I wasn't even trying to hold pace. I was just trying to hold effort, so pace was slowing down. So really, by the time I got to the mile eight marker, I was happy to be on roads, but I could not maintain the pace I had in the beginning of the race. And uh, it was kind of death of, of a thousand cuts at that point, especially with those two guys catching up on me. Um, it was right at the mile nine marker that they caught me, and I didn't have any fight left. Um, it's not that I was slowing down a whole bunch, but I couldn't, I couldn't match their move. Uh, one of them, Rob uh, McBee, was going for the Grand Masters um, record, state record, for 10 miles in that race. So I found that out afterwards. And, you know, when when I see a guy of his age, he was 56, closing that hard at the end of the race, then I know that, you know, he's a pretty tough bastard. So uh, I wasn't, I don't know if I was going to catch him again. The heavy breather, Michael, who ended up being a really nice guy, um, he, he made the move too. He was trying to stay with Rob. He couldn't stick with Rob, um, but he could keep me away. I ended up finishing about 13 seconds behind him. Um, my goals just kind of deteriorated. Uh, it was at mile four, I knew the sub one hour was out of the question. So I was thinking, let's get a sub 61. Um, and then at mile seven, I knew sub 61 was out of the question. So I just tried to keep it under 62, and I barely did that. I think it was, uh, I stopped my watch, according to Strava, at 61.56. I think, I thought my Garmin said 55. We'll see what the official time was, because they'll, uh, they'll post it later this evening. Um, but yeah, slower than I did at the Charlotte 10-miler. However, I did run a marathon two weeks ago. Not to use that as, a, as an excuse, but, you know, it... it I guess it does explain why I was a bit tired at the end. Good race. Would have been a fast course if not for those soft sections. 
Don't know if I'm going to make that five hour round trip to do that one again. But uh, let it be known, my time would have won, would have been the winning time last year or the year before. So um, more people showed up this time. I think everyone was looking to cherry pick the same way I was. But first age group, uh, I get this cool gold colored horseshoe to go with the triple crown theme. Um, nice people down there. It was great to do a cool down with Rob. Um, yeah, that's all I got. This time. So just kidding. I meant to talk about shoes for a second because I'm a shoe geek. Um, I wore the Vaporflies, the Vaporfly Next Percent uh, for the race, the, the original version. Not the 4%, but the original Next Percent. Um, and I'm start, from some of the wear I'm starting to see, I've had a few pairs of these, and they all wear in the same place. Most of my shoes wear in the same place. Um, these, let's see how much mileage is on them according to Strava. 148.5 so 150 miles on them um, I usually wear in this lateral midfoot lateral forefoot midfoot area because that's where I foot strike and then I toe off when I resupinate of course on the left side I always wear more and if you can tell you know they're kind of going through the outsole there. I always bevel off this midsole because of that. I think it's just on my left foot, and I've seen this in other races and race photos too. I think I have a, a twist in my left side, so I'm not only, when I'm towing off, I'm twisting off, and so I'm getting impact, and then that, you know, dry twist that just kind of really eats away at shoes there. Because um, the heels are generally pretty good, just a little bit of dirt. Um, on that soft surface that I was talking about, I didn't feel like I had the best traction. I don't know if it had to do with outsole or if it was just the energy sapping of the soft ground. The other shoe I had packed in my bag was the Adidas Adios Pro 3. I don't know if that would have been any better in that case or not. Um, a couple of my friends, you know who you are, would have recommended that I brought this shoe instead the uh, Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. Of course, it kind of wears out in the same place, but it's got a little bit more midsole to it. Whether that would have provided extra traction or not, that's yet to be seen. I certainly do love this shoe, but I just erased, I just raced a marathon in it two weeks ago, so don't really want to talk to it right now. Uh, anyway, shoe choice. I think I might try and veer away from the Vaporflies for a little bit and you know, branch out to some of the other super shoes. We know these work, but maybe something else will work better. All right, that's really it this time. Thanks.